Ah, man, it's hard to believe it's been three years now, maybe a little longer since I went full-time on the streaming. And one of the things I promised myself when doing that was I'd do more long plays, and that would uh, give good just cause to play more different types of games other than strategy games. To this date, we've done, I don't even know how many long plays. Quite a few. I do have a count somewhere. Where are you? Since I started counting them, the very first one apparently being Resetier, uh, Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe marks the 49th long play that I've done. Five of them were actually shelved due to just generally being terrible, starting with Rant 6. Most recently they are billions. Let's not think about those. That's a small margin of them. The 50th one is going to be one of these four, and you get to decide which one. All I need to do is actually sort out my poll for it. Now there was a temptation to put the Xenonauts Ballistics only campaign as one of the votes, but I need there to be a break between it, otherwise it kind of invalidates the vote if you just get the, the one that lost the next session, doesn't it? So, next long play. Don't worry, I will talk about what each of these are before it goes up to vote to try and keep it somewhat fair. Because when I add things to the long play, it's usually because somebody submitted them on my long play suggestions sheet, which is right below the stream. Uh, I need to set up the poll though, so excuse me for this flow breaking moment. Skate Simulator, which I incorrectly spelt as usual. Uh, poor Tuck. Surviving the aftermath and. Avorion. If you have plenty of votes saved up in this channel, they too can be used here to great effect, surely. Maybe. Oops, almost started the book prematurely there. We'll have this run for three whole minutes. But before the vote starts, let's talk about what each of them are. And I like a drink, but I'm out of water. Save that for later. So, Escape Simulator. It's uh, a game which has loads of different escape room puzzles. Been a fair whack since we've had a proper good puzzling time on the long play, so I would run through the game's uh, escape rooms, and I think there are custom-made ones as well, if I'm reading it correctly. Mind-bending puzzles to either figure out swiftly and look brilliant in front of a chat, or to have dozens of people point that you are missing something blindingly obvious. I think I wrote that description myself. Uh, it looks fairly short, but because of DLC maps, we don't know how long it would be. Next one up is submitted by Tsingis. This is Urtuk, The Desolation. It's a tactical turn-based strategy game. And the pitch is a strong one here. It says it's basically Battle Brothers, but without the frustrating RNG. Also, the combat is even deeper than Battle Brothers, in Tsingis' humble opinion. Now, I ran Battle Brothers a couple years or so ago. I enjoyed the game, but after about 20 hours I was done with it. Um, which is just as well, because I beat it after that time. I said I'd come to Urtuk once the memory of Battle Brothers has faded, and it indeed has. I could well go for something like that, so it's up to the vote. I think it has tried and failed in the past on the long play vote, but here it is again. Surviving the Aftermath. This one gets recommended to me a lot, especially on YouTube. Calmest Gamer puts it in. It's a builder strategy title, and they put a big spiel for it. But if they took the time to write it, I'll take the time to read it. This is a great survival builder game, which offers more than just a normal builder game. Since coming out of early access, it now has a main mission which runs early on through the game to the end game, which gives an end point to get to. The game is not just a builder game, it offers a world map. You can send explorers out, get supplies, and do other smaller missions, which gets more resources, kind of similar to Frostpunk World Map, but turn-based like XCOM. This game throws a lot of random issues at you, like nuclear winter, meteor shower, lightning storm, getting attacked by raiders, etc. So you need to be prepared for each event to make sure you can survive it. If you haven't played it already, it might be worth trying this on a medium setting. If you like more of a challenge, do it on 100%. Estimated length is 20 plus hours for that long play. Now, I've never played Surviving the Aftermath. I've played a little bit of Surviving Mars, and I thought it was pretty poor. Hopefully this one's better, and certainly I hope it's better than End Zone A World Apart. Which looks very similar, but very cringy game, that. And next up is a real dark horse, Avorion. Shifty Theory submitted this one on the long play suggestions. They said it's in the same vein as X4, Elite Dangerous, or Factorio. The spiel is, well, it definitely is long. I know some people haven't finished this game and are 200 plus hours in. 
It wasn't their goal to finish, but they definitely went through every part of the game. It does have a slow start, initial learning curve demand. However, you can build some really cool stuff. Ships, fleets, stations, and not just combat. Also, the creation of goods, and there is a really good economy system. Now, you know how to hook me in there with words like economy system shifty theory, but Avorion does indeed look pretty large, and I'm not... I don't tend to be big on my space games, but I tend to like to bring in a game that's a bit of a dark horse on these votes. Apparently, the length of long play says could be 50, could be 250. Dangerous, but it's not for me to decide. It's for you to decide, and you decide right now. That poll is going up. You should have had plenty of time to decide. And if you've had the patience to be sitting through Open TTD, your ultimate reward is being able to choose this. Now, often it pays to come out of the come out of the race immediately, swinging hard and swinging fast. So that's giving a Vorion a pretty big lead here. And it also tends to mean it sucks up votes from others. Looking at it, Escape Simulator and Surviving the Aftermath are already dead on their legs. Most importantly, it's not weeb-powered, says Urkran. Yeah, I was talking earlier about how we could do with some weeby games, since we haven't had them in a fair while, but I didn't have one prepped for this one. When was the last weeb game we had? Uh, oh god, we have to bring it all the way back to Ama Yui, which was 11 long plays ago. And it was one of the longest long plays, probably until now, because Open TTD has been long. Okay, we've only just started, but it looks like Avorion, with 69% of the votes, is going to be decimating this. Uh, Rune Factory 5, believe it or not, was about 16, 17 long plays ago. It came after Railway Empire and before Black and White 2, and whilst I know that it felt like that game never bloody ended, it did. Just wait until there's Rune Factory 3, though. That one comes in out of nowhere. I voted a bit of both, and that most interests me. We'll see. Avorion is looking good. As I say, I don't often play space games. Space does not inherently interest me. I'm the kind of person who'd rather sail the seven seas than sail through different galactic systems. I was never into Star Trek or Star Wars or whatever those things are. I've always liked my things a bit more down to earth. But... There's always exceptions that prove these rules. I do love FTL, though. That's more in spite of its uh, setting than anything. So the attempts to bring a Battle Brothers like back on the channel seems to be stumbling in the face of Avorion. Abortion is space Legos. I assume instead of abortion you mean Avorion. But Shifty, you're one of the ones that put in one of these suggestions. You put in Avorion, so I trust you're voting for it. Less than half the number of votes as people in chat. What's going on? People fell asleep at the keyboard, probably. <laughs> Maybe people just tune in to open TDD to show their support, but they don't want to see a single hour of it. But that's okay. There won't be a single more hour. <laughs> open TDD just does that. All right. It seems like Urtuk is just not seeing the support of Glorious Avorion. So unless something drastically changes in these final 20 seconds. It's going to be explore, build, fight, and trade through space. I think part of the thing I'm doing Urtuk here is that the image here doesn't tell us anything about the game. I just grabbed their uh, their Steam page views or GOG page views for it. And Urtuk, there's nothing there showing that it's a Battle Brothers-like. It doesn't really show anything about the game, apart from maybe it's a bit grim. But, like I said, from right out the gate, Avorion is the big winner, and we can actually see who caused such a thing. I always like to see where the popular vote lies in these. Let's get those results out, and hopefully get them captured. Bear with me just a moment. Uh, what's it under? Poll results, something results. That looks it, but it's way too huge. Of course, you shouldn't be able to see anything. Now you can, though. Alright, bring you over here. What do you have to say? Under the magnificent chinking of our uh, vehicles down there. Give us a breakdown. So, the glorious winner of Orion. Not only did it get 77 votes out of 47 people, but a fair few channel points thrown in, mostly by Mr. Birdplane. Shani X, Darth Air. We don't get to see the individual voters, but if you were so keen on something that you backed it with channel points, your name's shown here. And it's good to see that Shifty is actually backing the game that they put forward. Baron's behind it, Lanker, Wooter, and Tin. 
Now, yeah, it, it even won the popular vote there. Only 20 people backing Urtuk. Wait, Lankerson's back there again? I suppose they did say they were backing both, but Urtuk more. And then five poor people behind Escape Sim, and only two people behind Surviving the Aftermath. That's funny, I really thought Surviving the Aftermath would come out stronger since it has, um, as I said, a lot of people throwing it at me on YouTube and the like, but I suppose the people on YouTube are different from the people that watch the live streams. I suppose it, in a way it sucks for them, they don't get to choose any of the longer content on this. Well, too bad for them, I'm going to have to locate and set up Avorion, and the long play of that will start hmm, on Friday apparently. Punishment Games tomorrow. What a joy. Seven Kingdoms 2 and Chinese Parents. That I also need to get set up. But until I am back with those tomorrow, it's a cheers for joining for the rather monstrous amount of open TTD we've had. And a cheerio.